We published an analysis on August 22nd, Dip Buyers Beware, Odds Favor Lower Lows in Stocks. You can Google that title on the internet to find a copy of that research. This video adds commentary to some of the weekly charts presented in the August 22nd analysis. Just to set up what we're looking at here, we're looking at the transportation index in the United States. This is a weekly chart. What we're looking at is exponential moving averages. During a bull market, the shorter term exponential moving average, which is the 17 week in blue, tends to stay above the longer term exponential moving average in red, which is the 30 week. So what does a bull market look like? A bull market looks like blue above red. Right here we had what's known as a bullish crossover. That's a buy signal. During the bull market, the blue line stayed above the red line. Even here it held in this correction area. And then it crossed over here in a bearish manner. We had a bearish cross of the 17 week exponential moving average crossed over the 30 week exponential moving average. And as you can see, after that happened, price action was weak. The transportation index recovered. It happened again right here in 2008 and prices plunged. In 2009, we got the bullish crossover where the blue line crossed over the red line. You got a buy signal. After that buy signal, prices did do pretty well. Last summer in 2010, the blue line never crossed below the red line, which told us to try to be patient. Unfortunately, as of August 22nd, 2011, we just had really last week another bearish cross similar to this point and this point. We've got a similar bearish setup in the Emerging Markets Index. Let's just go over a little bit more about how you use these exponential moving averages on a weekly chart. As long as the blue line, in this case is the 18, is above the 34, which is the red line, you err on the side of being bullish and trying to stay with the bull market so you can capture higher highs. So here's a correction. You never get the bearish crossover in here. It holds. You try to stay with this market because you want to participate in these gains. Same thing here. Correction. You try to stay with the market to participate in these gains. Here there was a bearish crossover. You try to stay with it here. Once it crosses over, if you were just using this signal in isolation, which you would not do, this is a bearish crossover. So now you give the bear market the benefit of the doubt. Bullish cross here worked pretty well. The signals also worked here. The blue line never crossed below the red line in this area. We recently just had, if you look at the numbers here, as of the close on August 22nd, the 18 is at 44.73, which is below the 34 at 45.18. Moving on to basic materials, we'll move a little bit faster now since the concepts are similar. If you want to take a closer look at these charts, just pause the video and then start it again when you're ready to move. Market held here, held here, did not get sell signals, got a sell signal here, worked well, got a buy signal here, worked well. Blue stayed over red here, gave us a good indication to try to be patient. That worked well. We recently had the blue drop below the red here in 2011 as of August 22nd. 73.36 is blue, is below the red, which is 74.32. From a fundamental perspective, it's not a good sign to see these stocks, basic materials, this week. Also, this vertical decline is not a good sign. Usually, vertical declines are followed by additional weakness. Also, not a good sign from a bull bear perspective to see small cap stocks getting sell signals. 
In terms of, of how these moving average crossovers help us, volatility is really the enemy of investors. And why is that? Well, this volatility, this volatility shakes people out of these markets. Your objective is, if you understand that the odds are in your favor in a bull market, which the blue is above the red, that looks like a bull market, your objective is to try to ride out this volatility so you can participate in these gains. Once you get the sell signal, it works the other way around. You're skeptical here. You never get the blue crossover, and the bear market was not over yet. Here's the buy signal. Here's an area where it held. Here's our position in August where the blue bearishly crossed below the red for the Russell 2000 small cap index. Our friends to the north, Canada, their economy is heavily dependent upon natural resources or commodities. So when economies are doing well around the globe, Canada tends to do pretty well because there's demand for commodities. Canada is not immune to the sell signals that we're seeing on weekly charts. This looks like a bull market, blue above red. You try to stay with it. Red above blue, this looks like a bear market. Buy signal, blue back above red, this looks like a bull market. Now we're getting the cross. Do these crosses necessarily mean that we've kicked off something that's going to look like this? Absolutely not. What this just tells you is, is that the odds have shifted. And instead of being in our favor, like they are here, they're now really somewhat against us like they were here. But nothing says that economically or the Fed could pull a rabbit out of their hat and we could get this blue line to cross back over the red line on these charts. If that's the case, then we're more than willing to be open-minded about bullish outcomes. What you do, as long as the blue is below the red, you err on the side of caution and you give the bears the benefit of the doubt. If that changes, you're more than willing to keep an open mind and give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Moving over to Sweden, we see the odds have shifted in a bearish manner, similar to the other charts. The fact that we're seeing this on several charts tells you that this is probably not an isolated incident or dependent upon one sector or a region of the globe. This is looking more and more like a global bear market. It doesn't mean that we have to panic. It just means that we have to have contingency plans in place and continue to shift our focus from that of giving a bull market the benefit of the doubt to giving a bear market the benefit of the doubt until things improve. How long that takes remains to be seen. Sometimes you get crosses here in relatively short order. Sometimes it takes a long period of time. This is not a time for investors to be sticking their heads in the sand. It's not too late to develop a risk management strategy for your portfolio. If you Google Shivako Capital Channel, you can find the following videos that may be of interest to you. Stocks, not too late to sell, covers risk management strategies. This video describes how to manage volatility in both bull and bear markets. Debt crisis investing covers the possible domino effect the debt crisis may have on the economy. It also covers examples of dividend stocks that were hit hard during the last bear market. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional 
before making any investment decision.